design points make that possible. The major difference between the MiG and fly-by-wire Western aircraft is that the MiG's controls take a lot more physical effort to move. This doesn't mean that you need great strength, but full-time attention has to be paid to factors that in Western aircraft would be looked after by the computer. Western pilots find the agility of the fulcrum amazing and say that its low speed performance is at least equal to any Western fighter. They find the claim of engines outstanding in power and response, giving the aircraft tremendous acceleration. In formations like this, the distance between aircraft can be as little as 10 to 15 feet. Since MiG-29s have been appearing at Western air shows, they've created great interest. Among their repertoire are two extremely impressive maneuvers, the tail slide, in which the aircraft goes straight up and then slides down backwards, and the Cobra, in which an aircraft flying straight and level suddenly flips its nose up past the vertical and brings it down again. The Russians perform these maneuvers very close to the ground. It's spectacular, but it can also be dangerous. In 1989, at the Paris air show, Anatoly Kvotchur's engine failed to respond, coming out of a low-level tail slide, and he was forced to eject. His MiG-29 crashed, and was destroyed, but in spite of the fact that he was so low that his parachute could not open fully, Kvotcher was flying again in a few hours. Kvotcher says that the sensation of ejection is very smooth. He should know. He was forced to eject once again, this time from a two-seater MiG. Again, he was at low altitude, and again he survived. In 1993, at an air show at Fairford in England, two MiG-29s had a mid-air collision during a display. Again, both pilots survived. Russian pilots have at times been criticized for flying these aircraft too close to the edge of the flight envelope. The Russians contend that the great thrust ratio of the MiGs compared with Western fighters make such flying acceptably safe. Sun sets, another world comes to life. At Discovery HD Theater, the new 24 hour high definition TV channel from Discovery will take you into the dark and show you things you've never seen before with a quality and detail you've never imagined. Wild nights, what you see will amaze you. After dark, it's a whole new planet. This summer on Discovery HD Theater. Order Discovery HD Theater today. Call your local cable provider, Direct TV, or Dish Network. Here at the Discovery Wings Channel, we understand there's more to fly than just flying. Welcome to the Aviation Files, your in-depth look at the world of flight. We'll take you behind the scenes, inside the tower, and onto the assembly line floor. We'll show you breakthrough designs and put the state of the art to the test. Don't just take off, 
Go beyond the cockpit and open up the aviation files. Sundays at 7, only on the Discovery Wings channel. This is the MiG-29's big cousin, the Sukhoi Su-27. It's the top end of the Russian fighter inventory, designed in Soviet days as a counter to the mighty American F-15 Eagle. It's an aircraft of stunning power and performance. It's much bigger than the MiG-29 and weighs 70% more. This mechanic standing between the Su-27's twin vertical fins gives some idea of its massive scale. Apart from being roomier, the cockpit layout of the Su-27 is similar to the MiG-29's. It has the same ejection seat. The concept of the control system is the same, apart from the fact that the Su-27 was designed from the beginning as a fly-by-wire aircraft. The weapon system of the Su-27 is basically the same as the MiG, but the missions of the two fighters are different. The MiG is a frontline fighter staying within 100 kilometers of its own lines. The Su-27 was designed to penetrate deep into enemy airspace. In spite of its size, the Su-27 is incredibly maneuverable. This one is being flown by the great Sukhoi test pilot, Viktor Pugachev. Like the MiG-29, the Su-27 can perform the tail slide at low altitudes. At this point, where the aircraft starts to slide back, the engines of most Western fighters would stall. On the Su-27, it does not. The second maneuver that the two contemporary Russian fighters have become famous for is the Cobra, where the nose pitches up past vertical while the aircraft continues to fly forward. It looks absolutely impossible. Russian air show crowds have come to accept the extraordinary handling of these aircraft as normal. This is ex-MiG pilot Anatoly Kvotshur, now flying Su-27s, making a low speed pass at a very high angle of attack.
The SU-27 has a large air brake by